one of the first editors' forums that The Voice will be doing over the coming months because we want to get to the heart of what Black Britain are thinking. We're speaking with experts, people who know exactly what they're talking about. Today at Operation Black Vote, we're talking about the state of black politics in the UK. We're talking to people like Lester Holloway, he's a councillor in Sutton. We're also talking to David Weaver, a co-founder of Operation Black Vote. And we're also very privileged to have Dawn Butler, a former MP for Brent. So I'm very excited to see what the discussion will be, and I, I hope you'll join us the first of a series of um, editors forum that we are going to introduce for our publication which is the voice newspaper um, we hope to from these forums we generate a lot of debate um, we take away a lot of stuff from it we publish it and then we get the readers now to then react to it and then hopefully we continue the debate we will follow this up in the newspapers in the weeks ahead i suppose i'll just say a few things i think Firstly, I think it's an opportune time that we're having a conversation of the type that we're having this afternoon, where there's so much uncertainty going on in the world, so much uncertainty going on here in the UK, and I think particularly at a time where um, the whole narrative around race and being black and being black in the UK has been very much diluted, and that you know, in, in many of the political circles that we all operate in, to even begin to have the conversation is challenging in and of itself. And I think that marks a time where we really need to reassert black leadership and to determine what we mean by black leadership. And I think that this is a great opportunity for us to, you are thought leaders in your own niche. And I think it's important that people get to hear what you have to say and also just to educate people a bit more about the work that you're doing. And I also think it's a great time for us to really step up our game when it comes to black leadership. And I think that not only do we have people in politics, but we need to support that level of leadership, that direction, and to make sure that our population, our community, are actually actively engaged, educated, and making informed decisions about politics from a local level right up to national level. So I'm really honoured to be part of this. What it did, it opened the door for me to sort of see the whole landscape of the UK political dimension from a conservative perspective. Because, and when I joined the conservative actually, it was, I felt that there was a slight, there was a level of imbalance within the British community whereby everybody was leaning on one side. And it was felt like if people did not tap into the other side, we're going to miss out on something. So like, when we sit here in this room now, having this discussion, all different parties, affiliations, then we can actually come to him some sort of agreement to say, let us see what all, the, all of us are going to be doing in the parties and come to a, a common denominator as a community. Great. Jill, can we go to you, please? We have, as a, as a black community, we have made great strides. That's not to say that there isn't yet plenty to go on and plenty to be done. But I think we do need to also acknowledge that we have made a lot of progress in um, enterprise. And interestingly enough, <coughs> within the black community, there isn't really a lot of research that's been done, even though we have this sort of big society rhetoric um, that where social enterprise is sort of put at the heart of that as, as the, um, the sort of mechanism that's going to engage with communities. My name is Caroline Caroline Marsh. Uh, I am an entrepreneur and um, from my own perspective, I think it's the, the challenge is actually, as I've been working with other, other entrepreneurs in the community, is just them having a platform or that access to actually the information and the knowledge of things are possible. So you know, there's so much going on in the sense that you can access this, that, there, but there, there are no clear directions. There's nothing clearly being stated in terms of as a female entrepreneur. Politically, we have to look at what the government's trying to do in terms of individual registration, because that would actually reduce the number of people who are registered to vote. Um, we also, and we also have to look at the number of people who are unregistered to vote, getting people to vote. So once they're on the registered vote, and also letting them know that if you register to vote, it doesn't mean that somebody's going to come and hunt you down for credit card payments or your council tax or anything like that. I'd say um, getting involved um, politically and in the in the system 
in the party systems. Sometimes people who don't grow up in, in political households do actually have to sometimes you know, find their politics, but actually the, uh, the fact that they want to get into politics I think is actually something which is, is the, the, um, the, the acorn that really needs um, developing. Now I think that it's interesting when you look at why people say they want to get into politics. Some people say they want to get into politics for uh, a whole range of you know, individual beliefs that they have. You've got uh, many women who actually say, I really want to actually push gender equality. What you don't get, or ha very rarely come across at all, is anybody, uh, any black people, any people, uh, and any people of colour who actually say they want to get into politics uh, because they want to actually do something about the huge uh, disadvantage that many black communities face. I first got elected in 2006. For me as a young person growing up in Brixton, one of the key things that we need to look at as well is actually when all of us, I'm, I'm sure a number of us have been out sort of voting and you know, canvassing, when you come across some people in the black community at the age of, you know, sort of in their 30s, 40s, 50s, and they've never voted in their life, it's so difficult sometimes trying to convert that person on the doorstep. One of the key things I'm really passionate about is our young people getting them involved in the political process. We have a number of really active and bright young people in land just taking an active role and active involvement in what's going on. We focus on the next generation, which is the youth. And I've recently just uh, completed a two-year chairmanship of the Equality and Human Rights Commission Race into Construction Inquiry, which revealed a number of things, all of which will not surprise many in the room, about the lack of representation, the lack of skills development, <coughs> lack of knowledge, lack of social networks, lack of connectivity in the construction arena, which, from my view, has led to the lack of presence of particularly black businesses in the UK construction. To vote, you need to have a cause. You need to have a purpose. And nine out of ten people, talk less of the youth that we talk to, don't have a cause or a desire to vote because they have nothing to vote for. And I think if we bring it back to basics, um, irrespective of what councillors are or aren't doing, what is it as a focal point that we're giving our next generation to vote for? Um, and as an individual, I think it's my duty to just raise the bar because we, we don't have that representation and management level, senior management level in the UK. Um, I'm from Peckham, uh, one of the most deprived parts of the country uh, by, by none, and uh, I was born and raised there. And uh, I uh, was in a situation as a youngster where I was dis dis disenchanted um, with my circumstance. I lived in a council home, um, there was mold in my house, there was rats you know, running around my house and I wanted to do something about it. And I began on a journey, you know, a journey that would um, lead me through understanding the political process, understanding how to um, speak to my councillor, how to get things done and eventually that would lead to me, you know, leading a campaign to uh, watch my estate fall to the ground because it was in so so much disrepair, you know, by the end of the process, you know, um, we needed to do something, you know, the council needed to do something radical about it. And that was how I became, you know, a political activist. That's how I became um, a Liberal Democrat. We elect a lot of people into positions of power, um, but, you know, scarcely few really deliver. But through my own experience, working locally with the councillors, I was able to see um, parts of uh, the borough that I grew up in and love transform into a wonderful, prosperous um, environment. And that was led through sheer commitment drive. I'm conscious that in the party that I'm in, you know, we very much represent the last frontier, really, for black representation. And, you know, we know that we've got a job to do in terms of making sure that, you know, the black politicians, you know, within the Labour Democrats really rise to be on those green benches in Parliament. And I hope to be one of them. And, you know, there are a string of other people, you know, uh, who also have aspirations to, to uh, rise to that potential. When we do get in politics uh, as minorities, it's, um, it's very difficult because you t find it's often you go in politics for, for one term. There's very few of us who are around for sort of, you know, term after term. And so it, that, that's very important that we, um, I think, uh, start very early 
at school, somebody mentioned about citizenship classes, I go to up my schools and my ward and talk to the young people because like I think somebody else over there mentioned, I think it was Dawn, that you know, people want to come and become politicians but you say, well what party do you want to join? They're not really sure, not, un unclear as to what's motivating them. Um, and I have to say a lot of that really, uh, I take a lot of blame for that because I think that um, <coughs> we've got to try and be less tribalistic, we've got to try and encourage um, our brothers and sisters to just express themselves in whatever in whatever way, not to be too part of politics. I mean, politics with a small p. I mean, it's not all about being an MP or councillor. You know, you, you can be in politics as, as a magistrate, as I was myself, or as a chair for TNRA group. Um, you, you know, there's many different ways you can express yourself as a school governor, for example. And I think it's more important we get our people in those positions of authority because you know, wherever you are and you're in that position, people can see you're there, um, other people can learn from you. you. I think it's an important time, again, to, to have this debate. But I think not just to have the debate, because I think as black communities, what we do very well is um, prevaricate, pontificate, assassinate, <laughs> and have a debate. Yeah. What we often don't do is arrive at solutions. Yeah. And some of you in this room will have heard me say that, and you would have, have said that some 10 years ago, even in this very room. So I think it, um, it really is, it bestows us the responsibility to really look at not just having a debate, not just having a solution-focused debate, but an action-orientated outcome to the kind of things that we're speaking about. We've got to come away from those labels, of, those dysfunctional labels that they like to assign and throw at black people. And I think it's important to find a few. We have to have a, an organisation, a leadership model that we say, irrespective of their political view, this is what I believe, this is what I think is going to make the change. And, you know, and a lot of cultures, they put them everywhere. But it's about the common purpose, and I think that we need some agreement about that. And it's time for us, and I'm sure that we'll get a lot of stories out of this which will carry the paper ahead. But we are interested in whatever views you may have, so uh, we have guest columnists and so on in there that will open up to everybody, and so on. So, again, thank you, everyone. Thanks for... Operation Black Vote for host, for, host, for hosting us today, right? And Sonia for facilitating. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Well, that was quite a heated discussion. We talked about everything under the sun, from how to get black people to vote, how to get black people involved in politics. Um, there was a lot of debate, especially from the cross-party politicians, but I think we're all united in saying that we've got to get more black representation. I'm Elizabeth Pears. This is The Voice newspaper. You can also catch this on ViewNow TV.